in the name of my ancestors. Peace forever and always. Welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. Of course, I am the host or the gatekeeper of this internet ministry. On YouTube, I am known as the Mighty, 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 mm. Angel Snub Nuff Seven, your brother, and hopefully your friend, Talik Even Rock. I hope you enjoy the video that follows this introduction. Again, peace forever and always, and respect you. In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always, welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. I am the mighty, mighty, mighty Angus Snub Nub Seven, your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. I want to make something very, very clear. And you can challenge me all day and all night. And when it's all said and done, you will be shown that there is no such thing as black racism. There's no such thing as a black racist. Don't exist. Because in order for there to be a black racist, you must have black supremacy. And black supremacy does not exist. Mind you, the potential is there. The potential for anything is there. But at this time, it does not exist. At this time, within black people, or even African people, dark people in general, there is no outcry. There is no longing for no black supremacy movement. It's not wanted. And without the people supporting that ideology or being conditioned in that manner, it cannot exist. So what I did in order to begin this uh, talking about this topic, I did a quick Google search. Now mind you also, I did not really get into the Google search, but I just wanted to see what does the government, what does the intellectual, what are they saying about black racism? There is no government statistics on black racism that I know of. I don't see any because it don't exist. What are the colleges and the universities? What are they? What are they talking about? Are they bringing up the subject of black racism? No, they're not talking about either. It does not exist. Just because a group of black people beat up or even murder a white person based on because the fact that they white or whatever race. That's not racism. Maybe a hate crime, because I hate you because you white, or you was Chinese, or you a homosexual, or whatever. That has nothing to do with race, racism, being a racist. These was individuals that committed a crime. No more, no less. A black person can hate you. Don't make him a racist. He can be prejudiced and biased in his own capacity. He can deny you a job as an individual. That's not racist. That's prejudice, bigotry. Hatred upon this one particular person. Exactly what is racism? Racism is the capacity or having the power. You don't want to hear it. 
But this is how it goes. Racism is having the power and the capacity to translate your bigotry, your hatred, your prejudice into laws, into customs, into policy, into religion in order to harass or make the other race inferior to you. Black people are not in that position. That's where you that's why in white supremacy you can have hatred for black people, bias, but the law will support you. So back in the day, you could hang a black man, lynch black people outright in the open, but the law, the government supported bigotry and that hatred. When was the last time that you seen a white man be lynched, be murdered? And then the government, red, controlled by black, said, that's a good thing. Where do you see where black people force separation of the races? When was the last time you seen black people enslaving whites and made white people accept African names? Taught the white people they were inferior to black. Denied white people equal housing and jobs. And the law, law had to be made in order for the, for, for the black to accept equal treatment to white. Y'all know. Stop being silly. Here's another perfect example. I was speaking with my assistant, uh, minister last night and a perfect example of this was when I was locked up in a mental institution. Their hatred and my hatred two different things. Now I got a certain amount of power I could catch a doctor and punch him in the face. But see not only can that doctor give the order to punch me in my face? He can have me locked down. He got the power to write me as a dangerous criminal, never to be let loose again. See, I can punch him in the face. I, can, I got the power to punch the doctor in the face. But that's it for me. In fact, my violence towards him makes my situation worse because he got more power and control. He could deny me the right to visit my family. He could deny me the right to go to the store. He could look at all the powers he got. He could force, try to force medication on me. The only thing I can do is get away with a slap. And, and anybody that has been labeled and saying, you, that label is on you and it's on your record. You have that on you for the rest of your life. Is that a good label to have? Hell no. So what is my little slap? What is a beating by black individuals on white folks now and then? Because when they get caught, whose justice system are these black races are going to be under? Are they going to go to a... Are they under black Law? No. They come to white people. And what you gonna do to them black races? You know what you gonna do to them. You gonna put them under the prison. You gonna give them pure hell as, as much hell as you can give them. If not, kill them. Look at the, look, I speak English. I'm a black man, can't speak no African tongue. You got all these black people here in this country don't know nothing about Africa at all. And they proud to carry on your European name. That's racism. That's the real racism. Your dictionary is corrupt. Everything that you write about being black in your dictionary because you hate dark. 
There's always something bad. And then you want us to accept your definition of what racism is. That's the same thing as saying that the court would accept the definition of what a rape is by a rapist. We would be fools and stupid to accept the definition of what racism is by the racists, the true racists. During my Google search, when I was trying to find out about black racism, the only thing I could find and kept popping up was what white people did to blacks. And then, for those of you who keep talking this black race, the only thing information I found about so-called black racism was y'all YouTube, y'all YouTube videos. It don't exist. So why are these white people, why are these Caucasians, first of all, they want to be seen as angels. You're not angels. You are the children of murderers. You are the children of people who enslave other people. You are the children of rapists. You are the children of deceivers, liars, and killers. That's who you are the children of. You try to paint yourself like you like you are like you come from good stock. You come from evil and wicked stock. And you continue your wickedness with this black racism garbage, trying to make the victim the perpetrator. So you have people like the Genocide Scrolls, Block them, Kilo 34, these Caucasian people that hide behind a picture on YouTube. What is their intent? Their intent is to try to cause fear among white people that the black might try to make a black supremacist move on them. Even though it's very clear, black people are not interested. There is no African country. There's, there's no group of black people. A nation. Racism is a people on a people. It's not an individual act. It is this group of people who call themselves white who are conditioned to be hateful and prejudiced and they are conditioned to believe they are better and then when these darker people live within their society they have laws, they have education, they have all these systems designed to keep them in an inferior position. There is no black nation, there is no country there's not even a black neighborhood in America that's doing anything to white people like that. But you have neighborhoods in America right now to this day that don't want no blacks there. And you know it. And, the, and you got laws and you have customs and the people, white people have been conditioned. It's no big deal. Now for me, I don't want to be in your neighborhood anyway. But we're just saying, just for the sake of argument, this black racism don't exist. Bring your evidence here. Real evidence. It don't exist. You can scream, everybody can, you want every, now, you want, you want the black people to be racist. Well then, if you want me to be a racist, I want my white slaves. I want to demonstrate, I want to, be placed in a position to discriminate against white people. I want to put y'all 70%, 80% in prison and jail, just like you do us. I want you to go to jail for longer periods of time for your powder cocaine and give two months in the slammer for crack cocaine. I want to be able to do what you have done to us. But you want to make us racist, but we don't get the benefit. If I don't be a black racist, then I want the damn benefits. Y'all so fake. The bottom line is, instead of calling people names and trying to make the victim, the perpetrator, you should try to straighten up this mess your forefathers created. 
Or are you like your forefathers? Y'all like being on top. You like controlling things. You like your images on TV. Every time you turn on the TV, radio, news, and government, it's all nothing but you. You really like that. That's why a lot of black people don't like you. Because you're arrogant like that. And that's why you can't be trusted. Because you have been conditioned to see us as nothing and nobody. Jot down your comments. My time is up. Could have went on a little longer, but this is sufficient. Because ain't nobody going to come here and tell that lie that black racism exists. Thank you for listening. This is your brother, Tony Given Rock. This was and is the Reality's Temple on Earth. In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always. I am the Angel Snub Nub 7 here on YouTube and welcome once again to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. I'm your host, your brother, and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibnra. It's another hot one, y'all. Just experienced a whole lot of... Uh, a lot of storms rolling through the St. Louis area uh, all night long, almost all morning uh, long, and uh, it's just something else. Uh, it's very unusual weather. A few people have been struck by lightning here and also uh, having one death. Um, the weather has become very unusual. And that is not no, that should not be a shock. And of course, religious people would say, well, uh, it's the end of days. I am sure ancient people who hung around trees all the time probably got more, uh, probably were struck by lightning more times than we ever would be. Um, but that's a, I'm not even going to get into that issue because people will believe what they want to believe. Which brings me to uh, the subject of this video, which is, uh, I think that we all should be like a CSI, a crime scene investigator. Why do you say that, Brother Talik? I said it because truth has been murdered. And to murder is a crime. We were born into lies and deceit. Given half-truths along uh, the way in this journey through our life. We were born into it. So we should be like a CSI. We should be like a forensic investigator because almost everything that has been given to us is, is, is through deceit. It is false. When you become a CSI, crime scene investigator, you pay attention to details. If you and I, who, who are not trained in forensics, walk into an area or crime scene, we are not trained to notice, we only can see the obvious. A crime scene investigator must be able to determine that which is not obvious. As you know, I have asked us to reevaluate what we've been taught. And what brings this subject again up is not the crime scene investigation. That's not the subject. But I want us to be like CSIs. I want us to be like detectives. See, those who teach falsehood don't like detectives. Those who are trying to get away with murder don't like detectives because they looking to bring you in 
and held you and hold you accountable for telling that lie, for committing that murder. Now, in religion, a lot of us, we were brought into this. I am very sure your mother didn't want you to be a Christian and did that because her heart was bad or make you want to be a Muslim or a Buddhist or whatever the religion of your family's choice. The intent of the your family member, they don't know they have been deceived. They don't know that they've been lied to, like Malcolm said, bamboozled. They don't know. But now, the time has arrived that all these things must be brought into the light. And so through the reevaluation of things that I was taught, I was taught back in the day when I was in the Nation of Islam, The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that a man's sex drive, and this is the question I want to ask you males, the man's or the male's sex drive is so strong that he would have sex with a gorilla. And I want to know something. Is y'all, are y'all males? Are y'all that pitiful? Is that a true, for real, a true statement? Because for me, I'm going to tell you. Now, I was locked up for 10 years. And I had no desire for no man. In fact, I guess I put myself out there where no man, no males even approached me, even asked me, even tried to approach me that kind of way. Because I, because homie don't play that. So I guess, I automatically gave that aura. This dude, hey, hey, you have to do, you have to rape this one. It ain't happening. So ain't no man. I'm not attracted to no man. And I was locked up for ten years, and ain't no man looked attracted to me. Period. I was attracted to women. There were a lot of female staff running around that I sort of enjoyed. But there were some women in that place that I would not touch with a 10-foot pole. So then that, that reminded me and that memory came back to me because I was taught that the man's sex drive is so strong that he would want to have sex with a gorilla. Now here's women. I hate to tell you because of their lifestyle, they, they ugly and, and, and not attractive in, in no kind of way. No kind of way. And they're not a gorilla. And I did not want them either. So the chances of me being locked up and there's some female gorilla. See, we was, we was taught that because the gorilla vagina is almost is like a woman. That's why we would be attracted to. I don't want no gorilla. Do y'all, are y'all men, now I know some of y'all men, y'all do get weak. See, my mentality has never been there anyway. So some of y'all, that's weak in the mind, some of y'all men been incarcerated, some of y'all men that have not been incarcerated. Y'all fall for anything you can get your hands on. Ugly woman, raggedy woman, woman with three eyes, it don't make no difference. Then if you can't get a woman with three eyes, four breasts, then you'll jump on the man. We know that y'all will go for men. Y'all, some of y'all males out there. Some of y'all undercover or whatever. So we know you'll do that. So could Elijah Muhammad be right with y'all, not with me? He said that y'all so pitiful and you're so weak and your sex drive is so strong that y'all lay down with a female gorilla. <laughs> are y'all, for real, now tell me now, are y'all that damn pathetic? Are y'all that damn weak? For real, tell, come on now, just be truthful. Look, look, this is between you and me. Just talk to the camera. Don't, you don't have to, you don't have to say it out loud. Yeah, um, yeah, Toliko, man. I got to have mine, dude. Uh, yeah, man. Well, matter of fact, I'm sort of lonely right now. You you wouldn't have an extra you wouldn't have an extra gorilla or two 
you know, in the car with you, would you? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Lord. But, uh, that's, that's really sad. So, I all know. Now, for me, that statement is, is, is really not true. I'd rather be by myself than lay down with a gorilla. I'd rather be by myself than lay down with some foolish and stupid woman. And I dang sure ain't laying down with no hard looking dude. Black, white, whatever ain't happening here. Brother into that. Because I ain't never, even as a child, as a youngster, never thought weak like that. Never been like that. Man, it's hotter than a mug out here. But I wanted to talk to you. Jot down your comments. Those of y'all who strong, let me know. Hey, dude, ain't happening, bro. And y'all that's weak, nobody don't know who you are because some of y'all, most of y'all faces anyway. Go ahead and tell me how many gorillas <laughs> y'all lay down with. <laughs> Woo! Thank you for listening, y'all. This is your brother. This want to have a little fun. But I'm serious, too. This wasn't his. The reality's temple on earth. <clears throat> Gorilla. In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always. Welcome to another edition of the reality's temple on earth. I am your host, your brother, and hopefully your friend, Talik Evening Roth. This subject has brought upon uh, this lady, Helen Thomas, great, great anger. And it is a sensitive issue, but for me, it is just an issue of what is the truth. If I am wrong, if I am in error, then please correct me. But don't correct me with your mouth. Show me your facts. Show me clear, convincing, and overwhelming evidence in support of what you said. Because we live in a world where we have been lied to for thousands of years. And this is one of the biggest lies. Now, Miss Helen Thomas, she's an older woman. And instead of trying to deal with this, she decides basically just to retire and just get out of the limelight. But I want to say to Miss Thomas, you may be uh, older. But you were correct. You don't have to apologize when you are speaking the truth. Yes, these Jewish persons should go back home to Poland or Germany or Russia. And you can get angry at me and you can bring it because I'm not an elderly lady like Miss Thomas. Nor do I fear your anger or anything that you got to say. Bring me the facts, just like I say. If you have sufficient evidence to prove your cause, then I will submit to the real truth. And the reason why I support Miss Helen Thomas in this is because she has spoken the truth. And I will bring in, I, and I only have, I only have uh, 10 minutes, so let me get down to the nitty gritty. If you bought a used house, your house, so you think. And these so-called previous owners come back and say, I want my house back. They don't even want to give you any money. They just want to take it. This is what has happened in Palestine. You have these Jewish persons that claim they once lived there. They were the original owners. So they only taken what was theirs to begin with. Is this true? Jewish history is only 900 years old. They claim they are from the time of Jesus, which is, of course, at least 2,000 years old. They did not exist. These people call themselves Jews. This has nothing to do with hatred. This has nothing to do with prejudice. This is talking about truth and the facts. Bring me your evidence. Besides religious teaching, historical facts to 
to show that these people who now have occupied and taken Palestine by force, you tell me, you show me how they once lived there. These people came from Europe, just like Miss Thomas said. They are only about 900 years old in existence. Now, you can talk about the Bible. They wrote the Bible. Islam and Christianity are nothing but plagiarism of Judaism. And these are the creators of Judaism. They created a the New Testament, I mean the Old Testament, in order to give them a history to put them into a position of ancients where they don't belong. They were nomads running around in Germany and Russia. There is no proof that Moses existed. There is no proof that Abraham existed. Where is their birth record? Besides the Bible, besides the Quran, and all these religious books, Show me your evidence that Moses and Abraham even existed. This was done to give them a history where they don't belong. To put them into the position in the world that they enjoy today. They control the media. That's why there's outrage. That's why you accept these this falsehood. I contacted the Anti-Defamation League. How many other people are more knowledgeable of Jewish history than the Anti-Defamation League. And I asked them about three years ago. They said they answer all questions. The Anti-Defamation League said they answer all questions. That was three years ago. I said, show me with evidence without using your Bible or your Quran or these religious books. You show me where Jews existed 2,000 years ago. Show me that Moses existed. Moses and Abraham and Jesus and all these people are too famous to lose their family tree. Who wouldn't want to pass down the fact that I'm related to Jesus or Moses or Abraham? Where are their relatives in 2010? It is all a lie. It is all falsehood. Where is a diary outside? Where is the other information to show that this is true? Besides religious books, there is none. That's why in religion they ask you to believe. Because when they make you believe, they don't have to prove nothing. I say that again. When religion or anybody just asks you to believe, you don't have to prove nothing. You can get angry all that you want. But it don't change nothing. And y'all should be shamed jumping on this elderly lady. Right or wrong. With your vile and evil words. She has the right to her opinion. In the United States, I thought there was something called freedom of speech. But don't talk about Caucasian Jews. That's right, Caucasian Jews. White Jews. And a Jew is not a race of people. It is those who belong to a religion. Those who believe in the Torah. Those who believe in the fiction of character called Moses and Abraham. It is not a race of people. There is no Jewish DNA. Y'all are white people. That's why these white people in America support Israel. And that's why they do what they do because this country this country was founded on the same principles that Israel was founded. You came to America and you deceived, tricked, and ultimately murdered millions of Native American people here. Then you brought slaves over here to do your labor. Same type of thing. You did not care whether or not the land was already occupied. But now if somebody comes and tries to do the same thing to you, you got a big problem. Y'all a bunch of hypocrites. Bring me your evidence. It's a lie. I don't like, I don't like liars and deceivers. You can trick them, but you won't trick me and you don't trick many people. A whole lot of folks' eyes are opening 
to this lie. I respect those Jewish persons that lost their lives in the atrocity we call the Holocaust. But you know damn well six million people, six million Jewish persons did not lose their life. There was no order by Hitler to kill no Jews. It's much, much bigger. But since you control the media, since you have great influence over nation's leadership, you can tell this damn story, this lie. Because that's why you tell people to believe in the Holocaust. Because when you get people to believe in the Holocaust, you don't have to really prove nothing. Nobody ain't saying Jewish people didn't die. We're saying that six million did not die, and we don't believe the reason behind it. It's a lie. You act like you goody two-shoes. How are you goody two-shoes when you go to a land and kill people and take their land? That's what Israel has done. With the help of the United States and Britain. Is that right taking other people's things? Talk to me. Jot down your comments. <laughs> hey, this was and is the reality of step on earth. Don't never apologize when you're making a good point point. you're speaking the truth. Peace, y'all. In the name of my ancestors, Peace, fam, and always, welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. I'm your host, your brother, and hopefully your friend, the mighty, mighty, mighty Angel Snub Nub <laughs> uh, Your brother, Talik Ibn Ra. I just want to send this message to these cowards who wish to come upon other persons' uh, channels being disrespectful and rude and just plain ignorant. When you go to their pages, they have no videos, but they have so much to say and come to other people's Pages looking for entertainment. I want to tell you, you coward. First of all, you can call me anytime. My telephone number is public. And when you call me, don't block your ID out with your scared ass. I'm not here to play games with little children. I'm here to bring a message to black people to help us as individuals in our understanding of our struggle in this nation as well as we as a people. I don't have time for your childish game. So last night, right before I was getting ready to retire, two, not one, two idiots pretending to be homosexual Hebrew Israelites come on my page with their foolishness and their nonsense. And they thought I was going to block them. They thought I was going to cuss back and forth and play some childish game with them. You are barking up the wrong tree. I'm not going to block nobody. Matter of fact, I'm hoping for the first victim to make a video to show an example and make a, an example out of one of y'all faceless trolls. Here's a message to the cowardly, to the scary, the yellow back hiding behind a picture. This one is for you. Because clearly you are ignorant. I'm the wrong one to play with. Don't you know, once I tell you, once anybody tell you, you are not wanted on their page, then you should leave. Once you decide you don't want to leave, then you have broken the law. You can be charged with cyber bullying. They don't play with cyber bullying in the state of Missouri. And once you cross 
state lines, you committed a felony, a federal crime. You can be charged with federal stalking and harassment. So I want you to come bother me. Because I want to get you all tangled up. And I bet you all that laughing and giggling that you do, it'll be the last laugh and giggle. Do a Google search on Brother Talik Ibn Ra. I know how to go to the court. I know how to go to law enforcement. I will bring your ass down. Then I'm going to make a video about your ragged ass. And we're going to see what your face for the first time. <laughs> bring it. I'm not going to block you. You'll be charged with a criminal. Cyberbullying. Harassment. Stalking. Then I'm going to get you a second time because once I know who you are, because the law enforcement is going to tell me who you are because I'm a victim now. You the criminal. Then I'm going to file a lawsuit on your ass. Do a Google search on me. And you see how I love to file lawsuits. You think it's funny. Go play with those who like to play like that. You mess with me, I'm bringing your ass down. It's simple as that. I'm not going to block you. What well, YouTube says, the only thing you can... I don't give a damn about what YouTube talking about. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do to your happy, cowardly, faceless ass. You don't have nothing to bring to the conversation. You have nothing to say. Then stay the hell off my page. If I invite you, if I engage with you, that's different. But don't bring that foolishness, that ignorant crap to my page. Because you are violating the law. And I'm going to show you. I need somebody come on. Be the first example. Because you really think people be playing with your ass. I'm not playing with you. I'm the wrong one to play with. Go to Sesame Street page. Go to some porn page. Go to where they shake their booty or something. You're not going to bring that here. You can flag my videos. I'm used to that. That's the only thing you can do, silly. And I've been able to fight that off. Got five active channels. Y'all ain't flagged off not one of them yet. Bring, bring it. Bring it, children. So this is the last one. And I'm waiting for the one who's stupid enough and arrogant enough to believe this is a joke. You think this is a joke, don't you? Well, try me. Go ahead and try me. I will give you a warning. And once you get that warning, I'm going to save all your comments and everything that you do will be used against you in a court of law and you will be prosecuted to the full extent of that law. Now think it's a game. Bring, bring your ass up. I guess those homosexual Hebrew Israelites, whatever they supposed to be, they got angry and took off. Try me, any of y'all. This ain't no game. You will be charged with cyberbullying in the state of Missouri and you will be charged in federal court with stalking and harassment. You will go to trial. You will be charged with a crime. And I will sue you. And I will take your money. You will pay me for your silly comments. Come on. I'm waiting to get paid. This your brother. You got to talk. Hey, y'all. You got to talk tough to these idiots. Because they think this is a game. They think this is a joke. Not with me. Go somewhere else with that foolishness. But when you come here and you face reality, it's a whole different ball game. I'm not your boy. I'm not your toy that you play with. I don't give a damn about what YouTube talking about. You will get charged with a crime here. I'm waiting for the first one who want to cross that line. Is it you? Bring it. Come on. I'm waiting on you. This your brother Tyler Keeman Rock. Had to get raw. This one of the nails, brothers and sisters. Ain't y'all tired of these old faceless trolls? I know I am sick of them. Sick to death.
Don't have no videos. Hiding behind. Hiding behind a picture. Coward ass. Scary. That's because you shame. You shame on yourself. So just because you shame on yourself, don't play with me. Because you don't have no guts. Stand up and be a man. Call me on the phone. And I'm still going to get you. And you block your ID. You can block your ID if you want to. The police, law enforcement, everybody that, that, that knows these things, that don't mean nothing. They don't know who called with your cyberbullying, your harassment and stalking. Oh, I was so scared. I played a victim role to what it was. Oh, they scared me. I was terrified. You think it's a game. Bring it. Bring it. This is your brother Talik even raw. Sick of these idiots. You're going to stay on my page. I'm not going to block nobody. <laughs> this is your brother Talik even raw. Thank you for listening. This was and is the Reality's Temple on Earth. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Y'all gonna give me a thumbs up? <laughs> In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always, and welcome once again to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. I am your host, your brother, and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. It's another hot one in the Louis, and I might get a little disoriented because of the heat. Some of y'all might say, Man, fourth up sir. You, you, your ass is disoriented. If it's cold, how whatever. You be talking some bull. <laughs> Y'all some mess on YouTube. <laughs> Woo. That's all right. That's all right. Because apparently somebody want to hear me. I have five active channels, and all of them are getting are busy. So until the people say they don't want to listen to Angel Snuffed Up Seven. Then I will do what I can to make sure he is here. With that said, I want to talk about those uh, persons called mulattoes. The president is not a black man. He said out his own mouth. Barack Obama said out his own mouth, I am a mulatto. I am a black Kenyan and I am of my mother is of European origins Caucasian. I am a mulatto. But y'all that want to get so close to white folks, you got to make him the first black president. And the white folks that want to deceive you to make you feel good about yourself, yep, yeah, he's the black first black but he is a mulatto. Y'all halfway there. And really, you're not halfway there because he's a Kenyan, African. He's not a descendant of slaves in America. That's not my subject. But y'all, y'all love to believe, just believe anything that you want to. I have a problem. Now, quite clearly, you can see I'm a black man. The first thing people would say, oh, you probably mixed. You probably got a little white man in you, little Indian in you, and blah, blah. I'm a black man. I'm a black man. My parents were black people. That's what we look at. That's what we look like, and that's what you're going to go by. Ain't nobody going to be tripping about you got a little bit of this, and they go by exactly what you look like. Those mulattoes that look like Caucasian, they will pass for Caucasian, and they can say, well, I'm a Caucasian. But if they look like black, they can't do it. They might want to try, but they can't do it. This is, uh, you know, if it was not for slavery and the mistreatment of Caucasian people, white supremacy, and what the, the evil that Caucasian people have done against dark people, mulattoes would not, it, w it wouldn't mean nothing. But it means something because the Caucasian people that did this dirt, even the children offer no apology 
as a people. You have individual Caucasians that have no problem. They would work this out if it was left up to them. I said it to you again. If it was left up to some certain Caucasian people, if you want reparations, they'll do it. They'll solve this problem once and for all if left up to them. But it's not. The leadership, and due to the fact that a lot of Caucasian people have been conditioned to feel they are superior, they're not going to let this go. So the mulatto children are placed in a predicament because they come from two worlds that conflict with one another. And this is the problem with a lot of mulattoes is that they play both sides. They gravitate more so to the Caucasian side of themselves because the white man is in power. And he got everything and he ran everything. So they probably, they'll tell you quick, uh, my mama white, my daddy white. They proud of it because they want to be included in with the people that got everything and run everything. I, I get half of it. I'm half white. A lot of them ignore that black side. The president of the United States. Do he, how, much, how many times do he acknowledge his black side, his African side? Very rarely, he don't really care. What did he, what did he promise the black people, the black community? He ain't promised you nothing. But y'all happy because he's the first black president. Now, mulattoes will play both sides. They will gravitate toward the white side because the white man the white people, the Caucasians, ha are in control and have the power. But when it comes to other things like entertainment, playing basketball, you know the, the things that black folks is known to do. Or y'all got, or the black man got some money. Then they'll play their black side. Or oh, I'm a mulatto, my mama white. But I love the way you play basketball and I'm from the hood. Which they could be. They play both sides. But the disturbing thing is, they gravitate toward the Caucasian side. So that's why you'll see a lot of mulattoes on YouTube claiming they black. They really mulattoes when it comes to this interracial thing. Or defending white people. And they claim that they black. When, it really, when really, in fact, they are mulattoes. But they say they are black. Because black suits that purpose. Because they don't want you talking about those who are in power because they think they can benefit because I'm half. Now, of course, I'm not talking about all mulatto people. There are mulattoes who for some reason reject, wish they had no white side. And they gravitate toward the black, the dark. But that's very rare because most people want to be with the winners. Black people, dark people at this time... We are, we are on the losing end. And that's just the bottom line. People want to be affiliated with victory. They want to be affiliated with power. Not losers and clowns. Because everything that these dark Europeans have. I don't care if you're Oprah. I don't care if you're Bill Cosby or Michael Jordan. It was because the white man, the Caucasian people allowed you. And if you want to get arrogant, like Puff Daddy, Sean P. Diddy Cone, got some kind of record talking about, I got more money than the white man. You stupid Negro, they tried to get you the first time on those gun charges and throw your butt in prison. You ain't, Negroes, these dark Europeans just don't learn their lesson, do they? They tried to get you. They did their darndest to get you. And you did have a little money and you got out of it. But screw up again, Puff, silly daddy. Keep, keep playing with them. And you'll be like O.J. Simpson. And you'll still be rich. But when they finish with those court costs, and you owe all them lawyers, and they don't, and don't think they're not checking your tax records. they after you. You think that you got it. They, if you think that they're not keeping an eye on making sure Oprah 
pay her taxes and Bill Cosby pay his taxes, they are going to get you if possible. And you run around and think you got it going on. Y'all some silly dark European folks. See, I said dark European because of black folks. We know better. We know that folks smile in your face and they'll stab you in the back. The only reason why they have any kind of respect for you is because of your money. And some of them don't give a damn about your money. They'll call you a nigga in your face. And puff your face up with some damn, with a billy club upside your head. So you have mulattoes that come into the black community being deceitful. See, they can't pass for Caucasian, but they gravitate and have a love for the white side, so they don't like to hear black men like myself. They don't want to hear the Sarah Sudan Seti. They don't want to hear the new Black Panther Party. They don't want to hear the nation. They don't want to hear folks talking about white people. Because they are trying to benefit. They don't want that world to collapse. Of course they can lay down with uh, the children of those who terrorize our ancestors. Because that's not them. They came into being through false love and false romance. And a... And a deceitful condition that caused there to come into being have nothing to do with love and romance it was by design another way to keep black folks down because now that's just somebody that helped come to our communities well I, I don't want to deny my black side I don't just to keep folks confused that's all that's about but like I say there are Caucasian people who are willing to solve this problem. There's always uh, somebody that's different from the others. Jot down your comments. I know what I said is harsh. It's only 10 minutes. This wasn't is the reality, reality is temple on earth. In the name of my ancestors, peace, power, and always, welcome. To another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth, I am the Angel Snub Number Seven, your brother, the host, and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. Thank you, thank you so much for giving me a little, a, <laughs> a little bit of your time, <laughs> a little bit of your time. <laughs> All right, so let us go ahead and begin our little talk. I want to, I want you to know that I'm just going to get these little subjects and topics. I'm just going to bring them up because, uh, see, unlike some folks out there, there are a lot of y'all who are much more researched, much more smarter than I am. I will say this again. There are many of you out there in YouTube land. You may not make videos. But there are a lot of smart people out here in YouTube land. Of which we can learn a lot from. And I will embrace your wisdom. I will embrace your education. I will embrace your knowledge. That's a good thing because when I embrace what you know and you really do know, then that's less I have to read. <laughs> For real. If I know that you are a good source of information that I can depend on, that's less work for me. So I can bring up a subject and I know that you're going to bring in your years, months, weeks, or whatever you have to offer because you've been reading, you've been researching, you've been doing your thug fizzle. <laughs> is, that, is, that, is that a rap term, thug fizzle? <laughs> oh, I guess I have to watch more Snoop Dogg videos. With that being said, 
And I love intelligent people. That's why I love the folks that come to the Realities Temple. Because I know y'all got something that you want to get out. There's something that you want to share. But of course, you know, we surrounded by ignorant people. Ignorant people don't care nothing about uh, real knowledge. They like fantasy stories. They like fiction. They like things that sound intelligent. <laughs> that sound like it's wisdom. If you think it's butter, but it's not, it's your fun. Y'all remember that? <laughs> Come on, let me go ahead and get into my subject before I run out of time. I'm just tripping because I know I have I have 15 minutes now. <laughs> Once I get this uh, YouTube partnership thing together, I could probably do an hour if I want to. But, you know, really, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, really, that's really sufficient enough for you to say or do whatever you whatever you want to present. So let me get this ball rolling. I want to talk about Jewish people. That's right, I'm going to talk I, that's that's right. I'm going to talk about Jewish people. You are not beyond being talked about. Every time somebody says something, especially if it's negative, now as long as it is long as it is positive so-called Jewish people, they eat it up. Oh, that is right, my friend. That is right. But as soon as somebody, they think, saying something negative, you are anti-Semite. You are, you are anti-Semitic. You ain't Semite yourself. Prove to me you came from Abraham. You the seed of Abraham. Prove it. Prove to me that you was a slave in Egypt. 4,000 years ago. Prove it. Prove to me that 6 million so-called Jews died in the Holocaust. How are you going to get angry at somebody because I won't take your word for being true? Are you, are, are you telling me you're not capable and have never told lies? If, if you are capable of telling lies and you have told lies in the past, why didn't you? Why couldn't you tell a lie about Pharaoh and Egypt? Why you couldn't tell a lie about the six million so-called Jews died in the Holocaust? I don't trust. Now some of y'all don't have a problem with liars, as long as they smile in your face. They ain't done nothing special for you. They ain't bought you no car. They haven't bought you a house. They ain't done nothing for you. In fact. Behind your back, they're really exploiting you and leeching off of you. But as long as they smile, we were suffering in Holocaust. We were suffering. We were suffering in Y'all just believe anything. You have the right. And I have the right to question anything. And when people got a problem with you inquiring, asking questions about them, they got something to hide. Listen. All the Jews, they're suffering people. You know, there's got to be something. Folks just don't get jumped on for no reason. I mean, it's possible. But usually, if somebody is attacking you, or bullying you around, or whatever, it's a reason behind it. Because if Jewish people are liars, and they are, because they are they are. There are Jews in prison. There are Jewish pedophiles in prison. There are Jewish murderers in prison. Any crime that anybody else have committed. Matter of fact, that's the number one reason of why the God was pissed off at the Jews because they were a rebellious people. Now, why would God choose a people that refused to obey him be his chosen people. That don't make any sense. It don't make no sense to me. But it makes sense to a lot of y'all. Why would you choose your bad child as the child that you put all your resources and all like this when you know that's a child that's, that's no good? You will spend, on the, spend all your money on 
the child going back and forth to jail and you're going to deny the child that's trying to go to college, trying to do things right. So this guy, you trying to tell me this guy is so stupid that he's going to pick a people to be his chosen, the most rebellious. That don't even make, that don't make no sense. But I only got five minutes, six minutes, whatever, seven. Let me make my point real quick about the this Jewish question. Why Why do I believe? And I'm, I'm going to say I believe because I don't know. But I have a theory. I have a belief about Adolf Hitler and why Hitler jumped on the Jews, attacked the Jews, tried to annihilate the Jews. First of all, many of us don't really understand Adolf Hitler. Y'all think he was just some mean dictator? Hold oh, Hitler! Hold hey, Hitler! Nazi, the images that you see on television and the biased anti-Nazi media that the Jewish people put out on, on Nazi Germany. But you don't see, if you do your research, and you got the internet, it's not a, it's not a secret. Understand who Adolf Hitler really was. He was a very learned person. He even studied the arts. He was an artist. He was an avid reader. He read the Bible. He was familiar with the Quran. He understood the religions and the politics of nations around the earth. A very smart man. Oh, Talik said that Adolf Hitler was a smart he Yes, he was a smart man. So what? So here you are, Adolf Hitler. You're trying to raise your country up out of depression. And you're doing a pretty good job of it. You are a very knowledgeable person in all types of theater. You know what I think pissed Adolf Hitler out, off? And if you research Jewish history, you will see that there's a correlation, there's a similarity. It's a possibility that Adolf Hitler, in his study, because he was surrounded by some of the best scholars and historians, Adolf Hitler was probably pissed off because he found out that these people who call themselves Jews were not slaves in Egypt. Okay, so what? Is that enough to make him want to murder Jews? No, nah, not really, no. He just know that they lie. They lie. But then, he also probably researched the history of Jews, these Jewish people, not according to the Bible, but according to written actual historical text. And he might have found this out. And he began to look at his own people who still, even though they were doing economically, economically good, they were still suffering all this great debt. And guess who they suffered? Guess who they was owing all this great debt to? Jewish people. How was these Jewish people getting all this great debt? How were they getting all this money from the Germans? Because of their business practices. See, Jewish people are masters at business. They are masters at literature, media. All throughout time. They control the Bible. The writers of the Bible. They control the writers of the Quran. Do your research. Look it up. They control money. International trade. And Adolf Hitler probably saw that the Jewish people due to their slick business practices. Let me explain to you what I mean by slick business practices. See, you can be within the law. What you're doing is lawful. 
but it don't mean that it's ethical or it is moral. For an example, it only takes about 75 cents to a dollar to produce a record. The artist himself, for example, Michael Jackson, 27 cents. The rest go to the record company. What rest? When you go to the store for a record that it only costs a dollar, 75 cents to a dollar, to put on a CD, when you go to the store, you pay from 10 to 20 dollars for it. That's a long way from 75 cents to a dollar. So I can understand you making profit, but that's a ripoff. Why would you, how could you, what kind of person, knowing it only costs you 75 cents to make a record, but sell it to a person for $10? That's quadruple, way quadruple the profit. But that's how things work. That's how, but that's within the law. It's legal to do that. Here's another thing that Jewish people created in their business practice. A dollar ninety-nine. See, you're thinking about the dollar when it's really two dollars. See, it's a trick. In your mind, you concentrate on the dollar. With taxes, you're not really thinking about the ninety-nine. Eight hundred and ninety-nine dollars. You're thinking about the eight hundred, not the not the uh, 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 900. You think about the 800. Woo, my time I ran out all this just this, this quickly. I'm going into the next video. This is going to be a part two because I want to talk about talking about people <laughs> and why Jewish people and why black folks or whoever, why we all get upset because of people talking about us. Hold on, y'all. Go into the next video. Peace forever and always. Welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. Your host is his divine masculine brother, Administer Talik IBNRAD.